Oh, big play. Who is that? Is that Smith Wade? I think it is. And he's going to take it the distance. 30, 20, 10 touchdown Panthers. What a play from the, the young corner, Shaw Smith Wade. I almost called him a rookie, but he's not. He's a second year guy. And he's making plays. I just want to do a quick recap, show you guys the roster, and then also we will get into some preseason action. So, of course, we got Deion Boyd. We have the number one pick. And, of course, we had to take him. He was a top five talent, and that he was an 81 overall straight out of the draft. And he also... I went ahead and did all of the training camp and stuff right away just because that stuff is really boring. And I also probably swore quite a bit um, trying to finish some of these drills. And um, I just felt like it probably wouldn't have been a good part for the video. But anyway, we got the upgrade points. I'm going to go ahead and put that on field general for Dion and see what he gets in his first upgrade. It is two play action, two mid accuracy and deep accuracy gets one as well. I think he is gonna be a game changer for us. Also Tremont Battle, him and Boyd, I feel like those two getting drafted, us being able to land both of them, or if you remember, or if you don't, this guy was also a top five talent, but he was dropping. It was a top five talent that we ended up getting at pick 30 by trading up with some of our assets. And he ended up being a 78 overall. And well, he's gonna be a beast. There's no two ways about it. He is gonna be awesome for us. Um, I'm gonna do slot or not slot zone for him. To try and even that out a little bit. One catch, one play rec, three tackle and two to zone. Perfect. So now he's got 75 across the board on both. Oh no, 78 and 77, whatever. But 95 speed, 94 acceleration, 73 play rec coming straight out of college. These two are definitely going to help us reimagine the culture here in Carolina. And, I, and I'm so excited. We also got a couple of awesome players in Overton and Mobley. Um, Overton here has two because I had him as a focus player and I also did the training camp with him. So we are gonna do, I believe I want to do physical with him. His, his deep route obviously is his, his worst feature, but his release could use some work. So I think we are going to do, actually, guys, I've noticed this. Let me know if you guys have noticed this too, but I feel like Playmaker might be a little bit broken again this year. When they first put Playmaker into the game two Maddens ago, it was absolutely broken. You would get like, like 15 upgrade points sometimes for doing one Playmaker. Last year, they, they claimed they fixed it, which they did. It wasn't as, as good. And it, I even did a video on it. But this year, man, I did it a couple of times and I'm getting a lot of stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and do Playmaker and just see what we get. Yeah, six. Look at that. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Two, two ball carrier vision, one catch, plus six to deep route running just off of one Playmaker upgrade. So guys, if you're trying to build up your receiver, give them Playmaker as much as you can, guys. That's insane. We're gonna do it again, screw it. And he just went up two more overall, 74 to a 76. Look at this, guys. Oh, he's got an ability slot. That means he's at least superstar. But right away, we know that Overton is gonna be at least superstar or potentially X Factor. But he had one awareness, one carry, tra catching traffic, catching three more to deep route. So nine deep route upgrades off of two upgrades. One medium, two release, two short, one spec catch and a trucking. And now all of a sudden, Deron Overton is a, is a pretty damn good receiver as a rookie. 74 deep route and 79 release. Look, I, it's not my fault, man. Look, playmakers in the game. I wanted him to be a playmaker, right? So I, I, I chose it. We also do have Theo Judge, who was a running back that we drafted in the later parts, like more of the mid parts of the round. And like I suspected, he's a little bit balanced. 72 power back, 71 elusive. I'm gonna lean on him as the power back in this situation. We're gonna put power on him. I really want to see him grow into a role. I don't anticipate him playing right away. We have uh, Brooks. We also have Sanders ahead of him. He will be the starting power back, but he is going to be a guy that we're building up for the future and we'll see how things play out but he's already looking pretty good we have ridley that's probably our biggest question mark right now because he does have a pretty bad injury rating um 76 injury toughness is a 79 i hope it doesn't come into play but we know tight ends and offensive linemen are usually the first to get hit with injuries in, the, in these games so he might end up being a bust for us who knows we will see but right now he's our starter one addition to this defense that I feel like is going under the radar, even for myself, like I didn't think much about it, is Isaiah Simmons. Him and Trayvon Battle being added to this roster 
we just added a ton of height to our defense and our pass coverage. I mean, Simmons is 6'4", Battle is 6'4". This guy's a freak of nature. I, I just, I really think that we have shifted the culture already in this in this franchise. Now, we of course have to put pen to paper. We have to put the work in and actually, you know, get the wins and, and become a good team, which might take some time. But we have a really solid foundation here. And I am really, really excited about getting an opportunity to um, see what this team has. We still have a lot of places we have to adjust. We know Thompson's getting up there. He's on the other side of 30 now. Clowney is... I mean, that dude might be closing in on 40, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Okay, no, I'm sorry, Clowney. You are still younger than me. I am just being an a-hole. You are only 32. But anyway, we have a lot of question marks still along the defensive line. We brought in Brown, but he's going to have to be a placeholder. I don't believe there's a way that he's going to become the next great nose tackle for us if we even stay in a 3-4. I want to see how some games play before I make any type of decisions on playbooks and schemes. But um, we are going to be relying on guys like Horn, Brown, and Thompson to sort of hold us over while some of our younger talent comes into their own and also while we find more pieces. But one other person is Brandon Stevens, another free agent acquisition. This was a big time acquisition for us. This is going to round out the corner room immediately. Horn, Stevens, and now Battle. We do have a few more upgrades to do, so let's take care of those. Derek Brown gets one through all of the training camp and the, and the, the weekly strategy stuff. Um, I really want him to be, yeah, let's do that to power rusher. I want him to be a do-it-all type of player like, like he should be. And then we have a few young guys, Jacquez Green. Green is another guy that we drafted. He is going to be probably, you know, sitting the bench for this season. We'll see what happens next year, but he's awfully close to another upgrade. And for this, we're going to go run stopper. We know he can cover. We want to try to make sure he's a well-balanced linebacker. Two block shedding, three play wreck in his zone. That's that's a pretty good upgrade for him. Antoine Mobley was a guy that we found later in the draft, and he was had a round one grade on him, but he was still sitting there in like the, the fifth or sixth round, so I had to take him, right? I had to. He's going to be sort of more of our uh, slot guy. He's not the fastest. Definitely not good downfield, but he does already have short route running and 93 agility, so we're definitely going to try to get him involved in the, in the short passing game a little bit. And here, well, I... I might not do this forever, guys, but I'm going to go playmaker. Yeah, I'm, I I just, yeah. It's it's too hard not to. He got plus two to awareness, plus three to catching, plus three to deep route, medium route release, and spin move. And this one is actually makes more sense than Overton because he, I want him to be a playmaker. We know his strength is not going to be his downfield speed. His strength is not going to be beating man, like press man coverage and getting downfield or breaking people's ankles with his route running. He's going to probably make his money in the slot and in the, you know, zero to 10 yard mark area for, for plays. So this was a good upgrade for him. Gets him to a 74. And I did not forget about Bryce Young, right? I had a couple of comments and I feel like you guys, you know, in the comments, you're either Bama fans or you're Panthers fans. And listen, I feel you. Bryce Young, he probably didn't get the, the best treatment of a rookie quarterback, which a lot of them don't. Is he getting uh, tossed around? You know, in bad faith, yes, he is. Is he taking the brunt of the blame for maybe organizational incompetency? Yes, he is. But unfortunately, that's a position of quarterback. And while I would love to try and resurrect Bryce Young, Deion Boyd is just too good, man, and I can't do it, okay? I'm sorry. I will, however, continue to build him as long as he is on this team, which is why he has a skill point. I did something with him in training camp so he could get an upgrade. And we are going to go field general for him and see if he can get some more stuff. And if I have an opportunity to trade him to a team that actually needs a quarterback and he can get another chance to start, I will do that. Plus read awareness. That's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty. That's a good upgrade. Let's see what he's at now. So awareness, it doesn't show. Yeah, he is right there. 70. So he's at least now not in the 60s. And Mike Jackson was the last pick we made. Um, not really sure if he's really ever going to be able to be a part of this team. But he had an upgrade, and we are going to build him up the same as we would anybody else. And, um, yeah, that was just a guy I just randomly picked at the end there. But who knows? Maybe he ends up being a, a cool story, right? I did find a couple of undrafted free agents that I brought onto the team, one of them being Tavon Kirkland. The reason I really wanted him on the team is because this man is sort of an in-between. Like, he's not too small and too skinny type of running back. 
he's not too big like a power back six foot 207 he's 22 he's a 68 overall but what he does have is he has excellent return ability a 92 kick return ability and we really did not have that on the team so he was signed primarily for those duties and we'll see if he ends up you know turning into something more but for now that is, is going to be his his duty so chances are he's going to probably make the roster off of that alone which might put up somebody like Tyrion davis price you know on the outside looking in I also found somebody at wide receiver. Go figure. Rashawn Stump, 5'9", 181. He's got some good speed and acceleration, 92 speed, 95 acceleration. And he also had star development, which is the main reason I signed him. I always look for talent. If they are a 68 or better in a rookie, like undrafted, I'm signing them. Right? I, I, just, I, I just am. Because you never know what you might need them for. And you might have, you know, trade bait later on down the line. If you can store them on the practice squad and not lose them or keep them on the active roster or something like that. You never know. And I like having that flexibility. So Rashawn Stump, he is here. And we'll see what happens with him as well. I did sign Eric Watts out of free agency. He wasn't a rookie. He's a second year guy. But he was just chilling there. And 6'6", 274, 24 years old. Gives us some more depth and, you know, some competition for the offseason or for the preseason. But, you know, as I mentioned before with the switch to the 3-4, if you guys look at the makeup of this defense, and maybe I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in the first episode, but I'm, I talk a lot. You guys know this. We have a lot of guys that can play on the inside. Well, a few. Draymond Jones and, you know, Derek Brown. Like, if we wanted to switch to a 4-3, we could have Derek Brown and Draymond Jones be our D tackles in our base set and probably in our pass rush set as well. We would also, we would have Bobby Brown and Ika here, but they would just be, you know, the backups. We would have Clowney to drop down into Draymond Jones's place at left end. And we would have DJ Wanham to drop down in Derek Brown's place right now on at right end. And then of course we would swap all these guys around as well because you know, these are all edge rushers on the outside now. And then at the middle linebacker, we'd have, of course, Shaq Thompson leading the way in the middle, but that would allow us to get more playing time out of Trevin Wallace. And then of course, Jock Wes Green at, at outside linebackers. JC Horn, obviously number one corner. Stevens is gonna be our number two in base set, but when we go to nickel, he's dropping into the slot and Tremont Battle will be the, on the outside because it just makes too much sense. I also am really, I, I wanna see Shaw Smith Wade. So he is going to be our number four, even though in the slot, Dane Jackson is better than him by a few overall. I don't care. Um, I, I really want to try to build up Shaw Smith way because him and battle could be great for us down the line. Like Stevens, he's going to be awesome now, but he's 27 and Horn is 25. So he's young enough. But like if we could form a formidable like three headed monster in the defensive back room with Horn, battle and Smith Wade, I mean, that that would be a really good tandem for us. Safety, I mean, we're just going to ride with what it is. I like Isaiah Simmons, but I, I'm not, I don't believe he's going to be like the savior for us at the position. Even if I want him to be, he's already 27, but he's 6'4", 238. So I can move him around in some packages if I can find a good D book, or if maybe the Panthers have a good D book already, and I can just use that to move him around. Sort of like the Vikings do with Metellus. Yes, I know. I, I relate to the Vikings a lot. That's my favorite team. I'm going to do that. But you know how if you watch the Vikings, they'll have Metellus playing all over the field. He'll play nickel, he'll play linebacker, of course, he'll play safety. Simmons is a kind of guy that you can do that with. You can put him all over the field and he can he can contribute because he's 6'4, 238 flipping pounds. I mean, that's not a safety. He shouldn't be able to move that way, but he does. And in Madden, he's he's always been awesome. I love drafting him. I think I did that with my Vikings franchise. I traded for him and made him a linebacker. So like I love Isaiah Simmons and Madden. I've always tried to get him in last couple of seasons. I wasn't able to this year. He was available. Had to sign him up. And guys, I remember I, I saw the comment from somebody about you yelling at your TV. I, I don't know how I didn't see Tevin Barkley. I, I even was like trying to replay it in my head. I don't know how I didn't see him. I don't, I, maybe I just got focused on Mobley or what, but yeah, Barkley is going to be awesome for the Eagles, I think. Uh, he's a well-rounded player. Definitely more just like Mobley. Not the best farther downfield or at the release point, but he's got 90 short routes, so that's an L for me for sure. He's got, you know, just as good speed and acceleration for the most part. Much better catching. Crazy agility. Better change of direction. Um, and he would have been an amazing kick returner. So that was an L that I'm going to have to take, and the Eagles get away with that one. Um 
Yeah, my bad, guys. Well, let's go ahead and let's kick this thing off already. Let's go to the preseason game and let's check out our new players and see what the Broncos got. All right, it is kickoff time. Denver coming out of the field. Bo Nix leading the charge. What do you guys think of the Broncos' new uniforms? I sort of don't like how they've made like the, the accents of the shoulders and the pants. I, I don't know. I love the helmet. I, I do. But everything else is sort of weird to me. They'll hand it off to Williams on the first carry. Stevens comes up to make the stop right off the bat. I'll get a gain of two. Yeah, I just, I'm really not a fan at all of the the way that they made the accents as Nix throws it and finds Sutton somehow makes the catch. He'll get a few yards, making it third and five. Drop back, under pressure immediately. He somehow gets outside and he's gonna take off and slide down across midfield. A pickup of 17 yards. I do, however, like the numbers. I do like the numbers. Like the, It looks like the inside is the jersey mesh, like inside of the number. Um, and I I don't know how to explain it, man. It just it looks weird to me. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what the, the, the thing on the shoulder pad is supposed to be, I guess. Maybe that's what it is. Nice play there. And that was Simmons coming down to make the stop on Troutman, the tight end. But the helmets, those are clean. Love them. First and 10 from midfield. Hand off, Williams up the gut, nice lane. He'll get about nine yards on the play. Third and one coming up. And they're gonna go right back to him. And he gets the first down. So Denver coming out not too flashy, but getting the yardage they need. And off again to Williams. And he'll take it forward for quite a bit. Second and eight. Or second and two. A gain of eight. Now, the sliders that I'm using. I'm using Matt Tent's All Madden sliders from Operation Sports. I'm testing them. Um, I, I was testing my sliders after the big patch. And I did not have time to really go through a lot of testing. And I just wasn't happy with what I was seeing. Um... So I'm going to test these out because this seems to actually give me a lot more run plays, which I love to see. Is Nix under pressure? He's got to throw it away. So that throwaway makes it second down. And I made the quarters shorter to 12 minutes and the clock run down to like 11 seconds. It gives less time for the quarterbacks to call an audible, but apparently there's something where that also leads to more runs. Almost like the, the the amount of play clock they have is allowing them to just check out of runs all the time. So I'm trying to test that out a little bit. And Zwanum makes the play, forcing the incompletion, and we are going to force the three points after the Broncos drive stalls out. Kick is up, and it is good. Denver takes the early lead. And on to the field comes Dion Boyd. First look. And let's see what we're going to start with. We got Brooks in the backfield, single back set. Boyd is going to start off with a handoff. And it's a quick three-yard gain for Brooks as he will get it out to the 30-yard line. It's pretty much the same formation. And we'll go right back to the same style of play as Brooks breaking off of one. And he'll get the first down. If you guys were going to change the Panthers' uniforms, what would you change about them? I don't know what I would change. I really like their uniforms. I don't, I've always have. Going back to when I was a kid, I've always loved the Panthers uniforms. Obviously the color scheme, oh, Boyd's first pass. He's gonna check it down and it's dropped. Who was that? Mingo with the drop. That was not something I expected to see. Uh, but as I was saying, the color scheme obviously makes a big, chunk of it i love the the black and the the light blue but oh oh no not immediately boyd with the interception is patrick sertan he will do that to you welcome to the nfl oh no well at least it's preseason denver starting off in a good spot after the interception 
Nix drops it off to Williams out of the backfield. And he will get a couple. Not much on the play. Simmons up on the stop. Nix drops back. Let's it go. It's completed to Troutman. And third and three coming up. Oh. Is that false start or is that encroachment? False start. There we go. Push him back. Yeah, get out of here with your fake Sean Payton. I hate Sean Payton. I'm sorry. I'm a Vikings fan. Anyway, third and eight. Nix takes a snap. Under pressure again. We can't get to him. Please don't let him do it again. He does. Oh. All the way down to the five. Bull flipping Nix. That's crazy. The fake end around handoff to Williams. Nothing to gain on that one. Second and goal. I formation. Big man in motion. Oh. This is where this is what I wanted to test. Is this gonna be a big problem again? If so, I might have to bring the play clock up to 12. But yeah, the delay of game stuff is something I'm gonna have to keep an eye on, which is why I wanted to actually play this preseason. Um the, the accelerated clock does help with uh, balancing the run and pass, it seems so far. Almost too much, so maybe I do need to bring it up a second or two. And see how things go from there. Third and goal here, Sutton in motion. Nix takes the snap. Underneath, it's caught, but Sutton just had too many bodies. And once again, we're going to stop them as they get close to the goal line. And we're going to get a chance to see Bryce Young. I do hope that I can find some success for him in this in this series. I really do. Not here, because Boyd is going to be obviously the answer, but I do want to see him succeed. You know, chuck it out. Oh, a nice catch by Kirkland. As Kirkland will get it for six yards. Nice little start to the drive. Just get some confidence in the young guy. Sanders in motion. Takes a snap, looking outside. Oh, a beautiful pass completed to Overton. And he's going to get a gain of 20. Big catch for the rookie receiver. Okay, first down. Young with the snap, rolling out. Fires it deep over the middle, and he's just outside of the arms of Stump. I give him credit for trying to squeeze that in there. It was a little off target, almost intercepted, but... That was a good throw. That was a good attempt. Give your receiver a shot. And if that's somebody better than our worst receiver, maybe they make that play. And another quick pass. That one to Mobley underneath. Gain of six. Maybe Bryce Young isn't as bad as we all thought he was. At least not in Madden's eyes. Oh, try to squeeze it into Overton, but he could not make the catch. And those are the kind of plays you want to see your big body receiver make. And we're going to have to settle for three points. It's going to be a long one. Patterson comes on. It'll be 54-yard attempt. It's up, and it is good. Six to three. We'll finally get some points on this board. All right, Mullins back on, on, on the field here. Hands it off to McLaughlin. I'm pretty sure that's Mullins. Turn around so I can see, man. He's not letting me see. Second and six. Pass. Right side completed. Oh, what? How did he get through all that? And that is George Webb, rookie tight end. He was drafted right around the spot where we ended up taking Ridley or would have took the other guy. But look at this play here. Look at this. Boom! <laughs> he shoved three of our guys to the turf. Well, two of ours and one of his own. That was insane. Hand off McClellan. Ooh, nice cutback. Still on his feet. He'll get it for six. So far, I'm not hating these sliders that I'm seeing. Re I really am not. Oh, big play. Who is that? Is that Smith Wade? I think it is. And he's going to take it the distance. 
30, 20, 10, touchdown Panthers. What a play from the, the young corner, Shaw Smith Wade. I almost called him a rookie, but he's not. He's a second year guy and he's making plays. So happy to see that we have a couple of young people that were still on this team that were, that were I should say here, that we can build up. We'll take the lead, 10 to six. All right, Broncos back on the field right after the pick six. Play action, looking deep downfield, and this time he's got a man open. It's number 16 all the way down, and it's uh, Franklin. Is that Troy Franklin, I think? Something with T something Franklin. Big time catch for the Broncos. And I, I think that was, is that too high or maybe one high? And we just, they just got burned to the outside. Very big spot open up in the zone there though. And he was left all alone. See if the defense can step up here. Owens underneath, they cannot. It's George Webb again. The tight end coming on strong here in this second quarter. Oh, he's got the, like, that's like the face that like every like white dude has in this game. I swear to God, I'm gonna have to change it. Yeah, sorry, I'm just, I'm gonna have to. Gotta get some variety on these teams, man. I can't stand watching the same seven faces. Touchdown, Denver. Throw it over the middle. And he dives in for the touchdown. It's Deontay Hardy. I was wondering why I do was so short. He's like 5'7", but he made the play there. Denver is going to retake the lead. All right, we're going to have one more shot at this. Got good field position from the 46. Both teams have had to punt their last time out. As, oh my God, what a catch by Overton. Give it to Bryce for giving him a shot. But Overton goes up and brings it down two defenders in the area that's what i want to see man that is what i'm looking for in a 6-5 receiver go up and get it give that confidence to the quarterback to look your way even if it looks like you may have a, a defender on you you know as young going for a deep shot he's got him for the touchdown it's sanders the tight end bryce young looking awesome out here against the backups but still he's looking awesome and sanders beating the corner it looked like the safety on the maybe it was a wheel route left wide open easy score what a way to end the half we're back here after the break first and ten handoff and it is judge looking for a lane he'll get six yards second and four Sanders in motion. Uh-oh, we're going to get a delay game. Oh, no, we don't. Nice. Oh, a quick out pass to the tight end, and he's off to the races. All the way down to the 30. I think that was Brevin Jordan. It was. Big time completion. A quick one at that. It was almost like a little like tight end screen, if, if anything. They disguised it well as a normal play with a flat row. Maybe that's what it was, just... You know, clear out to the flat, but it, it played out like a screen. And it paid big dividends already in field goal range. Kirkland in the backfield here. Mobley in motion. Snap it, snap it, snap it. Thank God. Oh, no. Oh, he somehow got it off to Mobley. That was impressive. I was not expecting that. That goes for a first down. I thought that was for sure a sack. Every time, man. They're, they're running so many. I'm going to have to increase that, aren't I? Yeah, I'm going to have to increase it. I was hoping it would work. Maybe it'll still work if I just bump it up like one second, right? Hopefully that'll do what we need it to do. But that rundown clock being what it's at is just not working right now, so... I'll make that adjustment. As Young underneath, completed to Mobley again. They'll get those five yards we lost back plus one. 
Dude, we're just doing motion on every play. What? Did, where did this come from? We weren't doing this all first half. Like, just stop doing, let's just stop doing like 13 motions. You know what I mean? Let's just not do that. There we go. Just snap it. There we go. Oh, look at that. Little man stump. Right up the middle of the field, down to the three. There we go. Hurry up. First and goal. Don't. Okay. And off to Judge. He walks right in untouched. And we'll extend that lead. Make it 24 to 13 here in the third quarter. All right, so we're going to pick things up here in the fourth quarter. As you can see, it's still 24 to 13. It's been a lot of back and forth. Nothing major has happened. Uh, all teams have had just punt, punt, punt. No turnovers. Nothing of the sorts. As we'll pick things up here, second and three for Denver. They just got off of a seven yard run by McClellan right up the middle. As Mullins right back to him and he'll get a first. No, I'm sorry. The guy's so short, I think he's a running back. That was Hardy. My apologies. <laughs> Deontay Hardy with the catch. There has been a couple of nice, like there was a sack or two, I think earlier that we got, but outside of that, it's just been tough defense. Not a lot of room in the run game for either team. As you see there, Barno on the, on the tackle, loss of two, second and 12. Had a couple of almost interceptions, but nothing has come to fruition for that since the Shaw Smith Wade. Oh, look at that. I spoke it into existence and it's Jamie Robinson. Is it Jamie or Jamie? I feel like it's Jamie because he's got two M's, but I could be wrong. So let me know if I'm wrong, please. Big interception from our backup free safety. And as I was saying, you know, we didn't have much. Well, now we do. Interception from the free safety. And we're going to get back on offense here in a good spot inside the red zone. Bryce Young has looked good. Like, even though we haven't been able to do much, there hasn't been, like, a lot of plays where I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You know, it's just been good defensive play. Young with time over the middle. He's got Mobley, and Mobley's got a first down to the five. Got our big formation in here. Play action. End zone, and that was doomed from the start. Overton got pushed out of the back of the end zone and never really got separation from the defender. Second and goal. I do appreciate the attempt, though. I just, I don't know if it was Overton being a rookie, not knowing what he's doing yet or what, but that was not a very good play. Sanders is in motion, the tight end. Hand off to Judge, and he will get just a yard. Third and goal. Oh, free play. Throw to the end zone, Bryce. Or throw it away. That was crazy. I didn't know we could get free plays. I'm I'm, I'm liking this, man. It was DeMarco. Look at that. It was DeMarco Ross. That was one of the guys that I was considering. <laughs> I didn't know Denver drafted him. I should have looked at their team better. So it's third and goal still, but we're now at the two. Got one shot at this. Let's see what we do. We go hand off to Judge. And yeah, they were ready for that one. Shut it down at the one. I'd like to see us go for it here, to be honest with you. We have the lead. It's at the one yard line. And it's preseason. Go for it. And we are. Love it. There we go. We're going to go right back to Judge. I'm assuming so. Yep, and that time the line pushed everybody back across the goal line. It was super easy. Theo Judge, two touchdown performance for him today. All right, so we're back on offense. Denver could not get anything going. We have a commanding lead, and I think we're just going to be running this ball out as Judge finds his biggest run of the day. Down to the 44, 11 for 36 for him. Of course, the two touchdowns. But that was by far his best run. He has not had a, a significant amount of work where he was, you know, gashing the defense. He's going to go right back to him. And that's sort of been what his day's been like. Second and eight, couple of yards here, couple of yards there. Five and a half to go. We'll go back to him. And close to the first. Gets wrapped up. And he's going to take his first handoff, I believe. And he gets the first. I think that was his first carry. It may have been his second. 
But either way, it's a good run. He gets the first. And we get to move on for another set of plays here. Judge back in. And it's going to be a lot of running from here. Judge in the open. Inside the 20. Make it 14 for 59. Add on to those stats, dude. That's what the big leads in the fourth quarters are for. Overall, I'm happy with the way this team has performed. I would have liked to see Boyd more, but we'll see more of him, obviously. But some good plays from the guys that I, I want on the team and I wasn't sure about. You know, how they would perform in this format. You know, obviously that's always a test when, you, when you're playing this way. Second and seven. And another handoff. Oh my God, Judge. He put 41 on his absolute back. That was crazy. That's what I want to see out of a power back. You don't get that too often in Madden. They don't have that the tenacity to them. And I hope that we get that with Judge. Okay, you should not have waited that long. We're going to go to him again. No, we're going outside. Horrible throw. We are lucky that was not picked off and sent the other way. Alford... Definitely should be kicking himself as he had a golden opportunity to get himself a huge play to the end of this game as we are just going to take three and make this now a 21-point lead. All right, so now that the game is done, I just sort of let it run out. There hasn't really been any changes. It's still the same score. 34 to 13 was the final. Um, Bryce Young finished 18 to 25. Not bad. 72% completion, 225 yards. Um, Nick Mullins did not have a very good day. 44%. Um, Deion Boyd didn't even have a good day, but it was one quarter. We really didn't get a chance to see him perform all too well. Bo Nix, while he was in, pretty decent. Six of nine for 23 yards. Uh, rushing, Theo Judge sort of stat padded there at the end. Yeah, you know, it, it's there's no way around it. 19 for 77. He was 11 for 36 at one point, and that was after a big, like, 15, 20-yard run. So definitely made the fourth quarter worthwhile for him and his stats. Um, McClellan was the best guy for the Broncos, 9 for 38. Didn't have a lot of running, though, before the second half. Something that I've noticed with this book, just not a lot of running at all. Receiving-wise, Jotavian Sanders, 4 for 52 with that beautiful touchdown down the sidelines. Mobley got in on the action. Uh, Rashawn Stump was a surprise, 3 for 36. Not a, a huge day, but to see him get in there, make some plays against the defense was good to see. Uh, George Webb, I think, stood out for me for Denver. I mean, Hardy was, he's a veteran. I, I don't really, I'm not too surprised by that. But George Webb, first game, he showed out a little bit, had a good showing for his first game. And uh, defensively, I didn't hear a lot about certain defenders. You know, like there was nothing talked about with Tremont Battle. He was in on a few sacks. Um, but the big plays were, of course, made by Shaw Smith, Wade, and Jamie or Jamie Robinson. I don't know which one it is. Overall, good showing from our defense. I was really happy with what we got. Um, no forced fumbles, nothing like that. But Smith, Wade, of course, with a defensive touchdown. Closed out to be a pretty darn good first play of the day. And it looks like we have a few upgrades after that performance. Jacquez Green starting us off. And with him, same as I did before, I'm going to go run stopper. Definitely want him to be more... Balance in that area. One block shed, two tackle. We're, we're, we're working on that slowly, right? His block shedding, his block shedding is horrible. 67. Play recognition needs to come up. His strength isn't very good. But he's got 75 zone. Tackling needs to come up. So we're getting there. Now he, we know he's got the intangibles to play off ball and in, in the zone defense and whatnot, but now we need him to also be able to play linebacker in the run game as well. And then Jatavian Sanders. Gets the next upgrade, and um, I think we're just going to go vertical threat. It's working for him. Gets him to a 71. Two to catch in traffic, three to deep route, or one to deep route, three to medium, run block power, and then one to trucking. Okay, so we got to the end of the game. I think what we're going to do to wrap this video up is I think we're just going to sim through the preseason. I, I'm not going to watch every preseason game. I think I, I have an idea of, of the players already. Um... The, the guys that were going to play well that I already anticipated did play well, so I don't see a lot of question marks being done with the roster at this point. So let's just go ahead and get through the season and see what happens. Okay, we got our first uh, storyline here, media availability and uh, offensive coordinator, so let's just start there. Now they're going to ask me about a position battle. Let's see who they think is going to be the position battle. I have a feeling it might be tight end. A left end battle? That's not even a question. It's Draymond Jones. I'm not even going to say this. There will not be a battle. Draymond Jones is the is is the starter. He's like 10 overalls better than dude. 
Okay, maybe not that much. But no, there's not going to be a battle. Yeah. Be mad about that all you want. I don't give a shit what you think, dude. What do you mean? He was our big ticket free agent signing. Why would I put him in a position battle? Everybody is down now in morale because I said Draymond Jones, who's five overalls better and was just signed to a massive contract for the money we had available, I should say. Not massive, but there's no doubt that he's going to be our starter. Where would that even come from? Okay, so we have made it to the end of the preseason. We went 3-0, and by the way. That's pretty cool. Let's check out what we have for upgrades here. All right, so a lot of really good upgrades. Dion Boy going to get one right away. We're going to do that to Field General. And he is going to get two awareness and then one accuracy to deep short and then also one throw on the run. Draymond Battle also got one. And I think we are going to continue... I'm going to continue to go zone so I can hopefully try and get some play rec while also getting his coverages better. And he is going to get one catch, one play rec, and three to zone. We have Jonathan Mingo, who is a deep threat. What do we need to work on with him? Uh, his release and his short his short stuff here. So, you know, short route, middle. Um, he is more so going to be like our starting receiver. We'll just go slot for him here. I'm not going to do playmaker every time, guys. Okay, I won't. I'll try not to. It's going to be hard, but I will try. He got plus three to catching, medium, uh, catch and traffic, break tackle and spin move all got plus one. There we go. Isaiah Simmons is going to get himself an upgrade and we are going to do that to zone. He needs to be better in that situation. He got a good upgrade here. Two play rec, two zone and one pursuit. So that brought him up to a 78 overall run support. Xavier Leggett and I am going to do... Okay, it told me to do playmaker. That's what I did. And we got a bunch of stuff. Oh man, these these upgrades are gonna be a little out of hand soon. Riley Patterson, the kicker, is gonna get one. We're gonna go straight to accuracy, cause why not? And of course, one awareness, one accuracy. Theo Judge also getting an upgrade straight to power back for him. Awareness, ball carrier, vision, stiff arm, and trucking. Siaki Ika, Ika. If I'm saying his name wrong, guys, let me know. I have no clue. We're going to do power rusher here because we want him to be able to come in on third downs as well in those situations. Three finesse, two power, and a tackle. That's a good upgrade. I will probably carry three quarterbacks. Um, I don't want to cut Andy Dalton, and I don't plan on doing anything with Bryce Young, so we're going to just move on and see if we can find something else to focus on. Um, we didn't... I, I Like I expected, I mean... Kirkland brings us that ability to return kicks, so I really don't want to get rid of him. So we're just going to go ahead and cut Davis Price here. That brings us down to four, which is what I normally carry. Wide receiver. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're just going to put Stump on the practice squad. Ah, oh, that's tough, though. It's really tough because he is star development. I'm going to try and see if I can keep him on the roster. I highly doubt I'll be able to make it work, but we're, we're going to see. Uh, Swinson, he can go practice squad. Okay, part of me would like to cut one of these tackles, but Daniels is 25, and he's a 68 overall, so I really don't want to have to cut him. But N Nijman? Nijman would give me, like, a 3.6. Well, we would still net 1.4. Um, we'll, we'll see. I'm going to cut some linemen, though, that's for sure. Don't want to cut those guys. Um, I could potentially have Raim go to practice squad and just have guards fill in there. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Move him to practice squad. I might move Zavala to practice squad. I just, I want to keep our line as good as possible, right? We have a 68 overall here. He's a 66. He's already 26. Let's just move him to practice squad. And we'll still have coverage at guard and we can have um, uh, Daniels here sort of, or maybe Nijman play inside and outside if need be. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Coming over to the defense. Pretty apparent what's going to happen here. Uh, I'm going to put Mike Jackson on the practice squad. He's 63 overall, so not a lot of hope for him to stick to this roster. Um, Ray is going to go to the practice squad. I would like to try and find a way to keep Eric Watts on this roster, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to because, again, Aishon Robinson is here. Let's see what I can come up with. We need three more players to go. If I can find three more players to cut, then we are good. 
I don't want to cut any of those guys. Maybe shareless. Oh, oh, here's can be a couple of them. Um, Barno. Ah, dang it. Yeah, I think Barno's gonna have to be an odd man out here. He's 26, 68 overall. We have DJ Johnson. Um, yeah, we're gonna cut him. And then over here, we're gonna put Graham on the practice squad because we have Nelson and Johnson over here. I'll move that over to make it make sense. Coming over to the corners here. Oh, I should be able to make this work then. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Yeah, we have plenty of corners here. So we're just gonna move Bartholomew to practice squad and that's gonna bring us down to 53. Well guys, that is it. Uh, we are through preseason. We got to see a little bit of action. Got this team rounded out to the top 53. Next episode, we start the journey of building this Panthers team into something great. And we'll get a chance to see Dion Boyd get his first NFL start. So I'm excited and looking forward to that. If you guys are happy Madden 25 is back on my channel here, let me know down below. It seems as if it's something I've been missing. <laughs> uh, tried my hand with NCAA, just, you no, know, it didn't really, didn't really catch, but I understand. But anyway, we are back. Panthers franchise set to go underway. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Before you leave, if you could hit the like button, subscribe if you have not already, turn on that bell notification, and, you know, share this video with a friend. You know, help a guy out. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.